Hello there folks. Here's a quick video today to show you guys how to use Codasys version 3.5 to configure some Turk IO, BL20 IO as a matter of fact. First of all, uh, I'm going to use the Turk IP service tool or address tool just to see if I've got some IO on my network. So I open up this, this is the old IP address tool, this is a new version of it. I'm going to go ahead and search my network and you can see here team that I currently have uh, looks like three different uh, nodes on my network. One's an old BL20 that runs uh, the old 2.35. And then here's the new one I'm going to play with today. And then I also have some FEN20 on here running RG code, which is pretty cool too. Check that out sometime. So I can see here that uh, it appears that the IP address dot 17 is the uh, BL20 rack I want to play with. So I'll close this little window. That tells me at least it's out there. Then I'll go ahead and open up Codasys version 2.35, Service Pack 8. I think there's Service Pack 9 out there too. Now, but. So here is this software. Let me see if I can use this. Stretch this over here. Stretch this down here. All right, I think we can see everything. So I'm going to go ahead and start a new project uh, just by going to File New. I'm going to select a standard project right here. And if you want, you can put a name down here, but I'm going to just sort and say OK. <clears throat> I'm going to pick, since I already loaded the Turk devices in here, and these are the Turk HMIs, but I'm playing with the BL20 stuff today, so I'm going to choose the Turk BL20 PG EN V3. Uh, I'm more familiar with the ladder diagram than I am these other methods, so I'm going to start out with ladder logic diagram, and I'm going to click the OK button. So this starts out the configuration over here on this side here, as you see. However, we're not actually live with anything right now. So uh, the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on the device right here, which brings up this communication settings. And in the old version 2.35, you had to go set up your communications to talk to a device. So in this version, what's kind of neat here is I'll click the scan network which will go out and find anything on the network that has version 3, at least the Turk I.O. There it is. I'll go ahead and click the OK button. If I click the wink button here, even though you guys can't see it, I can assure you that there is an LED blinking on the BL20 gateway right here. So I know that, that is the one I'm talking to. If I had multiple of these units out here, I believe they would all show up here. I pick the one I want to do. This is it. I'll click the OK button. Notice I now get a green checkbox here or a green circle in here. So now I'm configured on the network, but I haven't actually added the IO local. So I'm going to go ahead and close that window. To do this next step, I'm going to go over here to this uh, right here, the local IO. I'm going to right click on this guy and I'm going to do scan for devices. Now watch what this does. Scan for devices. It goes out and finds right now, I just have on this rack a couple simple eight input cards or eight input card economy style. And then I have a eight output economy style as well. So I'm going to hit copy all devices to the project. Notice that it puts them over here on the left hand side. So here's those slices right here. The next thing I want to do though, maybe I want to add, uh, well, you know what team? Uh, let me just try a little logic with you real quick. Let me go ahead and double click on the eight inputs. And let's say for instance, the channel zero, input zero, I'm all about tag names. If you, ever attend one of my classes, you know, I like to name things. So I'm going to go ahead and make this guy called input underscore zero enter. And then I'm going to double click on the output here. And I'm going to go ahead and declare the first output here, output underscore zero enter. So I just declared those two channels, input underscore zero and output underscore zero at uh, bit zero there. Um, let me go ahead and close these so we're looking at them here. What I want to do is just write a simple ladder logic that uh, takes that input and when it goes on, turns on the output. So here in the olden days, uh, you're, you had your PLC probe down here, you had these uh, icons. I'm going to double click on this, which is going to bring up my ladder logic. And here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to right click on this rung and I'm going to insert, uh, in this case, a contact, which is an input. Insert an input contact here. Now here's the trick, team. Uh, you see it says some help there. 
If I click right here and click these three dot box, the three dot box, I kind of like that. So, oh, three dot. Anyway, I think it's uh, Sammy Hager. Anyway, if I expand this window and I go to input zero, click OK. okay. Notice my cursor sitting there. You got to hit the enter key. Boom. I teach that in all my classes. Otherwise, you start typing, you're going to screw that name up, and it's going to declare a different variable. Now, I want to add a coil for the output. So I'm going to insert coil here. It gives me over here. Click on the three question marks or the three dot box. Click there. Expand the global tab. Global map. Output zero. Click OK. Hit enter. Boom. Looks good. I think let's try the F11 or let's go to the uh, build. Compile our code. See if we get any problems down here. I don't see any errors. Looks pretty good here. So let's go ahead and see if we can log in, team, like we used to. So in this case, if I go to the online pull down, I can do log in here. Or this icon right here does the exact same thing. Let's go ahead and log in and see what happens here. I don't know what this means, so I'll just go past it. Okay. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and say yes to download this new code. All right. So here's the new code. Notice the stop button down here is highlighted quite brightly. I'm going to go ahead and hit the run button here to run my code. And we're running now. So if I take an input uh, to input number zero on there, let's see what happens. Boom. And if you look right here, the input's on and the output goes on. And uh, even though you can't see the actual slice, it truly is going on and off. So pretty cool baby steps just to get uh, fired up here in Codis's version three. I'll be doing some more videos because I want to show you guys how to do uh, map this mod bus and slaves and so forth. But this is just an introductory video on how to get online in Codis's version three with Turk.io. Hey, thanks a lot. Have a great day. See you later, folks.